So tonight I have a once in a lifetime opportunity and I'm very, very excited about it. I am on my way to the Stade de France here in beautiful Paris for an all important World Cup qualifying match between France and Pays de Bas. <laughs> Otherwise known as the Netherlands. Now both teams are sitting second and third in their World Cup qualifying table. And of course, both of them traditional world powers in the world of international soccer. So we're gonna go check out the game. But first, we're gonna take a little detour, just mere blocks away from the Eiffel Tower to ta walk the streets of Paris, enjoy the ambiance, and uh, make our way to the train station so we can go up to the soccer match. Like we aren't very far from the Musée Rodin. The problem is I don't have time to go to the Musée Rodin. I gotta go to soccer. Frankly, it might be a little wasted on me, but the soccer will not be. I was not anticipating this kind of view, but I have to show you. The Eiffel Tower, framed beautifully by these gorgeous gardens. Or what about these very cool statues, which I don't know what it is or what it's telling or who it was done by, but I can certainly appreciate I do not get to see things like that every single day. I sometimes think that all of this is lost on Parisians, all the amazing artifacts, the amazing things that they get to walk by every day on their way just to do all their other tasks. It's really, really amazing. Like, I'm just walking to the train station and I've seen all that. Like, that's incredible. We can get back. Right. And we're here, bienvenue. Now the Stade de France, it was constructed in 1998. And in 1998, it hosted the 1998 World Cup, which France won with a three nil victory over Brazil in the final to take home the World Cup in their home country. Now the Stade de France also hosted the 2007 Rugby World Cup. So it is the only venue on earth to host both the football or soccer World Cup as well as the Rugby World Cup. So that's a nice distinction for the Stade de France. Now out of the game, they have volunteers out marking French flags to the side of the fans' cheeks. Let's see if we can capture that moment. Here come the Dutch. Oh! They're taking it. There you go. Doing it the other way. They're giving them the Netherlands flag. That's nice. Nice show of support here from the French Federation, Football Federation. Now in 2016, the Stade de France hosted the 2016 European Championships. And France, once again, they do good with the home crowd. They made it all the way to the European Championship before falling 1-0 to Cristiano Ronaldo and Portugal. And the last big historical thing that's happened at the Stade de France, of course, happened in 2015 when the tragic events of the terrible, horrific terrorist attack here in Paris took place just outside the Stade de France. Actually, a security guard was checking somebody as they were trying to enter and they were turned away and eventually the bomb was detonated and a few lost their lives unfortunately but um, that is another thing that has happened at this site but people have moved on from that and they've embraced what the stadium brings an opportunity to be patriotic in their country and to enjoy some world-class soccer and the Stade de France as well as Paris will welcome the world in the 2024 Paris Olympic Games 
and the opening and closing ceremonies are set to be here at the Stade de France. There's a few places to eat out here, but I want to see what's inside the stadium, maybe grab a bite in there. But you can also see just behind me there, the strength of the French military, as well as another big opulent building that you just would not see in the United States. You simply cannot beat the strength of a good old fashioned pizza. Easy to eat, delicious, and they're cooking them up out here outside the Stade de France. Of course, the biggest one is the pizza Nutella and cocoa. A chocolate and coconut pizza is probably Saint Magnifique. <laughs> Merci beaucoup. Here we go, up all these stairs. Now one problem about going to a sporting event in a foreign country in a language you do not speak is finding your seats. A little tougher than I thought it would be. We're on try number three now. Let's see if this one works. It turns out my seats aren't as bad as I thought they were gonna be. That's fantastic news. France, everybody. When you buy seats that you think are cheap, and you sit lower than you thought you were going to. That's fantastic news. There's an area for parents to bring their kids to get ready for the game. They have activities for just kids. And they've got it clear that it's just for the children. They can kick the ball, get points on the screen. And over here, they're having a disco party. As a parent myself, I always love it when you can find things for the kiddos at a sporting event. You got to make it more fun for kids and more bearable for parents to bring their kids to games. So. Well done to the French. And outside the stadium, they have the footprints of great French players. Like here's the footprint of the fantastic defensive midfielder, Patrick Vieira. All right, so there's something weird about the Stade de France. I'd never seen this before, but they actually have, like right over there is the west side of the Stade de France, okay? I'm in the north end. And once I came through, they did not make it clear to me that you could only stay on one side. Now, I really like exploring and seeing what all the stadium's about. If there's a museum, or if there's interesting things to look at, the good places to find food, not possible. Not possible. Now, probably for security reasons. I'm sure they have a good reason for doing this. But I hate to say it, I'm a little bit bummed. I, I, I can't explore the Stade de France and really get a sense of the entire building. I wanted to go over and see what the Holland supporters were like. I can't, I can't do that. Um, instead, I, I, I'm stuck here in the North Stand. So while I was going to go explore all of the stadium, I guess I'll just go and enjoy my seat in this beautiful beautiful facility holds 81,000 people that's quite a lot of people they're expecting a sellout tonight and one of the coolest things about the Stade de France is its unbelievable roof on it it's state-of-the-art world-class because no matter where you sit in the Stade de France you will not get rained on that's kind of amazing right as you can see from the inside of the Stade de France there's beautiful glass with speakers and there is shade that comes through there. All the infrared is blocked from that, making it a perfect spectating event when you come to the Stade de France. Over there are the 
Dutch supporters in their orange. They look great, unified in color. Stade de France, one nothing in favor of the French. Antoine Griezmann's goal is the only difference between Netherlands and France here. It's an awesome atmosphere, of course. And honestly, I'm having like an unbelievable experience. The French have been so kind, so good with me, and uh, really amazing place, the Stade de France. What's kind of cool about the Stade de France is this is where the French team plays. They don't have a club team that plays at the Stade de France, it's just Team France. So it really does identify as the place to come and cheer. Let's move. Into the game comes Robin Van Percy. Now I gotta lead in the supporters. We two guys with microphones down there. Showing the way for the whole stadium. This end gets it going and then the crowd effect works and it spreads 
second round. Now here we go. Attacking opportunity. evening here at the Stade de France. Unbelievable. France annihilated the Netherlands. 4-0. The vlog still undefeated. But beyond that, the French supporters, wow. Fantastic job by the French supporters. They took me in as an American. They put their arms around me. They had me jump up and down. I mumbled. I didn't have a clue what I was saying, but wow. Wow, were they a lot of fun. I, I had a great experience here, the Stade de France, with all the French supporters. And frankly, I, a couple of the goals that were scored tonight were world-class, unbelievable stuff. So it's a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity for me. So grateful I took it. I found out the game just a few days before I got here, was able to find a ticket, and I'm so glad that I did. Took some time out of my trip to come and see the French national team unload a barrage of goals all over Holland. It was amazing soccer to watch, amazing fandom, and really the building itself lends itself to a spectacular viewing experience. So I think all that's left to say is merci beaucoup to the Stade France. So grateful for the opportunity to be here and your very welcoming fans can't say enough about how fantastic my experience and my night has been tonight, so merci beaucoup. I hope you enjoyed the opportunity to come to the Stade de France here, just north of Paris, and enjoy the shellacking put on by Les Bruges uh, on, on the Dutch. Really, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this vlog. If you did, subscribe down below. Thanks for coming to the game with me. Catch you next time. If Rodin went to with me to the game tonight, he would be thinking, I think France really took it to Holland.